All right, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. Turbo is in. I actually just got the downpipe and everything mounted up. Um, still just gotta go ahead and put a clamp on that bottom oil drain hose. Just to make sure we don't have any leaks there. Starter is in. Cylinder 4 cooling mod is almost set up. I just left this one unhooked so that I could finish bolting up the starter, which I should actually do right now. I made a little bit of an oopsie when I was trying to torque down the uh, cam gear bolts. As I was trying to torque down the driver side intake cam gear, it actually spun on me a little bit. So I'm gonna retime it real quick, make sure that everything is all good there. And then from that point, all I need to do is just grab spark plugs. I'm gonna do one step colder and coil packs, 5W40 oil, and proper tune. And we should be good to start. It really was just a lot of double checking and small work that I was just doing. Like uh, these coolant crossover bolts, I wanted to make sure that those were tightened down. I just noticed that I don't have an oil dipstick, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and get that from Cameron. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish hooking up the cylinder four. I don't remember <laughs> where this ground wire goes. I'm 70% sure it was supposed to go on my starter, but you know what? I really don't remember, so we're just gonna, we'll figure that out later. As for that whole knock sensor situation, I ended up taking that old one out and I was just trying to find plugs back at home on that intake manifold I had. Luckily, one of the technicians here kind of had one that I was able to Frankenstein with, so we should be good to go with that. And I mean, worst case, Cameron has an extra one I just found out yesterday. All right. Is that up? I'm gonna push this outside and then I will catch up with you guys in one second. Okay, so quick rundown on timing for those of you guys who don't know how to do timing. On EJ's, it is very, very easy. There's gonna be a little notch right there that you wanna match up with the notch on the short block. Right there, if you guys can see it. This little thing right here, you wanna match up with this. And for every cam gear, they're gonna have one singular notch and they're gonna have a double notch. You wanna have the double notches matching and you wanna have the single notches matching with the marks that are on the back of the timing cover. So for this one, which is the driver intake cam gear, you wanna have this mark along with this one up here and right underneath it for the driver side exhaust cam gear, you're gonna have this timing mark on the side lined up with here. Same thing on the other side. This is now the passenger side exhaust cam gear. There's gonna be one mark right there you want lined up with the timing cover. For the passenger side intake cam gear, you want this mark lined up with the notch on the timing cover. So pretty much once everything is lined up, you're gonna to wanna to take your belt, make sure that this mark right here, when you're putting the belt on, is lined up with this notch up here, and make sure that the arrows are facing the driver's side. Once you have everything lined up, you have the belt on, you're gonna to wanna to spin it over twice from the crank pulley right here, and once you have all of your marks lined up with the timing cover, just like this, you'll know that you are on time. When you take out the pin from the tensioner, it puts a little bit more tension on all of these sprockets here and it moves them just a little bit. But everything, as you can see, is still in time. I finally understand it after doing it four times. I am just putting on my belt guide. So for those of you guys who don't know, that little bracket right there is a timing belt guide. And for these EJ motors, there's three of them. One right there, one in the middle. There's supposed to be one down here in the corner. And then one more right there, which I'm gonna finish threading in right now. And basically all it is is just to make sure that your timing belt stays in place and doesn't jump all over the place. Honestly, that's probably one of the reasons why it skipped before. I've never noticed that I had timing belt guides. I don't even know if I had them before, but now I know, now I'll never not have them again. Stepping away for one second, those are all tightened down. I just gotta put the front cover on and then put in spark plugs and pretty much the intake and everything and it's good to good to start up. We have our tune already. So literally the only thing holding me back now really is just time. That's all it is. A lot of you guys are probably wondering why it's been taking me so long to get this done. And honestly, I've been dealing with a lot more responsibilities and I just haven't had time to really focus on my car as much as I wanted to, focus on YouTube as much as I wanted to. The car was kind of on the back burner for a minute. I'm trying my absolute hardest to get it up and running now and try to get more content out for you guys. I don't want to be slacking anymore. I want to be able to grow and give you guys the content that you want. So with that being said, back to the video. All right, so I've got the front timing covers on, I've got the pulley on, started putting my turbo inlet on. I'm pretty sure you put this on and then you put the intake manifold on. 
If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I'll just take it off and do it the other way. This intake manifold is pretty much ready to go on. Only thing I have to do is go ahead and replace this crank position sensor over here, which should be easy. And then here on the back, this is the knock sensor. This is the one I'm having kind of a problem with. I know iWire sells plugs. What am I looking for in here? Also, one more quick thing that I noticed, I cleaned it off now and everything, but I came out the other day and I saw that there was water in here and it freaked me out. Luckily, my valves were closed so it didn't get into my pistons or anything. I even took the spark plug out, shot some air through there to make sure nothing came out. But it might just be because my hood has a hard time latching so some residual water might have creeped in. I don't know, but problem hopefully solved and moving on to the next. I was fighting with it for a minute because I'm an idiot and don't know how to do car stuff. I'm currently putting all the bolts in so I can get this completely set up. There we go. That's sitting a little cocked, but I'm gonna fine tune everything once it's all really put together. Now it's just a matter of putting all the connectors back where they need to go, really just tidying everything up. That's all I'm doing now. I feel like it's really time for some new headers. Everything is kind of all over the place, but again, I think once I clean it up, it'll look a lot better. Sort of got this side figured out. I had to just get everything under my power steering lines, just like this. Yeah, don't mind, everything's still very, very loose. Now I've got the passenger side for the harness about to be connected. There we go. This right here is for the EGT sensor. I don't have that anymore because I got rid of the stock up pipe, so the sensor is useless. Injectors all plugged in. Everything looks like it's pretty tight. Everything looks like it's, well, those are still loose, aren't they? Make sure I tighten down my AN fittings before I forget. All right, let's go into our cesspool of a back seat. We're gonna need this. This. Also, what is this? Oh, here's an old extra timing belt. Ah, uh, I'll leave it in there. Someone might need it. This is what I need. All right, let's get you on there, big guy. Hang on, guys. Ouchie. Now let's try this again. All right, got the radiator all bolted in, all hooked up. I just have to grab some clamps for this top hose and we should be all good with that. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the expansion tank another day and finish up everything else another day. Look guys, it's almost a complete motor though. I'm so excited. And I just, I hope that everything goes well so that you know when we start it, we don't have any problems. I can just drive it for a while and really just enjoy my car like I wanted to. I'm also doing the one-step colder plugs. These are my old ones. These are just stock heat iridium plugs. Which this one looks a little bit wet. Pulled that one out of cylinder four, which is the side where a little bit of water got inside of the cylinder heads. But I blasted all of that water out. I made it completely dry. Took all the spark plugs out. I didn't see anything coming out, so I think we're good to go. I don't think it got into my pistons. Before we leave today, I do also want to mention to you guys that I have been sponsored. Shout out to the homies over at Wickedly Boosted. I'm going to leave a link to their Instagram page and their website over in the uh, description box below so you guys can take a look at what they've got. So if you use this code RJZ, it'll actually get you guys 10% off of everything and also if you're using this link down below, it'll get you 10% off as well. So, help me going out. Alright you guys, I just pushed the car outside. I'm going to end this video here and uh, thank you all for watching. Next video we should be starting it, hopefully. Fingers crossed. But, peace out and I'll see you on the next one.